In the past couple videos, we learned about how we can be able to send graphical queries in React and different ways, different options, as well as different cache policies. But in this video specifically, we're going to take a look at how we can be able to use the suspense query along with our suspense from React 18 to add the fallback mechanism inside of our application. Uh, and we're also gonna take a look at how we can be able to return partial data along with different fetch policies using the use suspense query along with the suspense mechanism from React. And lastly, we're going to take a look at how we can be able to optimize our application performance by sending queries in the background along with our suspense fallback mechanism. And of course, if you're interested in more content like this, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video. And the timestamp of this video is in the description below. So feel free to jump to any section you like. And if so far sounds interesting, let's get started. So first, let's take a look at how we can be able to fetch data use use suspense query. So here on our left, we have our code which imports suspense from React 18, and we also import the use suspense query from Apollo client. And here's the data type that's gonna be returned from our GraphQL server, and this is the variable type that we're gonna pass into to our GraphQL query function. Here on app component, we have our suspense component, which basically takes the fallback. So basically what happened is that if there's any promise that's thrown inside of the suspense, like the children's, um, it will basically renders the fallback component. So here on our DAW component, which is the main component that we have. So here we're using the use suspense query hook to call the query, and this will give us the data. But what happened is that when we're loading the data, it throws a promise, so the suspense will catch that, and it will render the fallback component. So here on our right, if we were to refresh, you can see that it first displayed the loading, and then it displayed the data. And unlike use query, we will have to manually throw a promise if we want to use suspense component from React. And we can also be able to use the return partial data property from the use suspense query to return a partial data and display on our page first from our cache. And then we're going to send a network request to get the latest data back from our GraphQL server and display that on our page. So here you can see if I were to refresh our page, it first rendered the partial data that we have in our cache, and then it displayed the actual data, the full data from our server. Um, and to make it work, I basically use our Polo clients and basically update our client cache. And here you can see we have our git dog query partial, which only gets the ID and name. And then for the actual query, we also have the breed. And the way how we store our cache key is a combination of its type name and fields. So if the ID and the type name are the same, then we basically retrieve that data from our cache, even though that those two queries are not exactly the same. And you can see if we were to try this on our application, it first displayed the data from our cache, and then it displayed our data from our network response. And this return partial data option only works uh, cache first or the cache network fetch policy. So by default, we're using the cache first. So let's say if we have the breed, so let's say we have the breed, let's say if it's a type one, so what happens is that if this data already exists inside of our cache, then we don't have to fetch it again to our network. So let me demonstrate that. So let's say if we have our breed for our partial, then in this case, we already have this data inside of our cache because we're using the fetch policy, the cache first default one, then we're going to see that we already have this data inside of our cache, then we don't have to make another request or we don't have to make another query to our GraphQL server, right? So you can see that's why we have our cache data display on our page. But let's say if we don't have this, in this case, we don't have the full data, then if we, so if that's the case, then we're going to send a request to our server and fetch the latest data back. However, we can also be able to change the fetch policy to a cache and network from our use suspense query. So what happens is that we're going to return the data that we have inside of our cache uh, to fetch the latest data back. And once that data is back, then we're going to update our cache and display the latest data on our page. And if we were to try it out, you can see if we were to refresh, you can see first we have this data display on our page. And then this data got overrided because our cache data is different from our network response. All right, so now let's take a look at how we can be able to send query in the background along with the suspense fallback mechanism. So here you can see we have our app component, which basically renders our DAW component. And this DAW component will send a GraphQL request to our GraphQL server. And while it's fetching, we have our fallback, which will basically render some component on our page. And then once the data is returned back from the server, it will basically render that data 
and display the child component. And the child component also has this fallback mechanism. So it will send another request to the GraphQL server and so on and so forth. And you can see that this is gonna be very time taking, especially if there are multiple child components in the component tree that also has the suspense fallback mechanism. So the way how we solve this is that we can be able to um, use something like use background query to send query in the background. So this is what it looks like. We have our app component, which in the background, which will send another GraphQL request to the server. And also it will display the doc component concurrently. So the doc component will do the same thing. It will send a request to, uh, it will send the request to the GraphQL server. And then while it's fetching, it will have the fallback. And once the data is back, it, once it returns back to the doc component, it will display the data and also it will display the child component. And by this time, the query is already fetched in the background. So it can be able to just use the query reference and be able to get it from our cache. All right, so in practice, this is what it looks like. So here you can see we first have our app component, which sends a background query to get the breeze. And then we also have our app component, which renders our doc component and wrap it around with a suspense fallback. And uh, inside of our doc component, we send a doc query with the variable passed in. And then we're going to display the data um, once it's being fetched. And of course, uh, we also going to display the, the breed component. And by the time when we get to the breed component, we will just read it from the query reference that we passed in from our parent component. And then we can just pass the query reference to the use read query. And this will give us the data that we can be able to display on our page. So if I would refresh, you can see that it has the data loading, which is our fallback. And then it basically returned the data from our background query, as well as our get.query back and display on our page.